So how does Starling's Law really work? So what we're told is that Starling's Law states that the more the heart muscle is stretched, the greater the force of contraction, and that is correct. But how? How does that happen? A frequently used analogy is that of a boxer, right? So a short jab doesn't carry the same amount of force as, say, if he rears back and puts out a right hook. And we usually use that to sort of shorten a lesson plan and more easily relate a concept that is on the graph in front of you. It's, it's a lot harder to explain this than it is the boxer, but it's not a totally accurate analogy. The heart does not decide how much it wants to stretch the way you decide how far you want to pull your arm back and throw a punch. The heart has no ability to do that. So for all of its talents, the heart doesn't decide how forcefully it wants to contract and just increase muscle tension to do so. It works a little bit of a different way. So how do we make a more forceful contraction? The answer is preload. So this is usually a vaguely recalled concept uh, in people who are uh, done with cardiology. They can differentiate between it and afterload at best a lot of times. So let's get a real quick diagram up here and see how preload works. Preload is the force that's left over after contraction. That's one way you can think of it. One way I would like for you to think of it is it is the force of the venous return coming into the heart that is pumping the heart up to allow it to make that contraction. It is what actually makes that uh, stretch happen and it is uh, made by venous pressure so the right side of the heart and the left side of the heart they are under pressure even in diastole right that's why your blood pressure is 120 over 80 80 is technically your preload okay it's pushing the heart and stretching it full of blood with 80 millimeters of mercury that is basically what preload is another way i want you to look at it is how does it generate that pressure so on the diagram in front of you and this is a per perpetual motion diagram but we're going to alter it for our own purposes. You can see that each of these spheres rolls off a block and then creates a chain reaction moving to the next sphere and moving to the next sphere until it brings a sphere back on top, right? And each of these is pushing the next one as it falls. So imagine that there were a sack of these spheres sitting on top of this triangle block, and that would be like what the heart does. So it is gathering these spheres in order to push them out more forcefully. And then with contraction, we see that the spheres are pushed out and then more spheres are pushed in because so many spheres were pushed out. And this is the reason that your right ventricular MI or your right sided MI patients are preload dependent. They need this force because since the right ventricle is infarcted, it is not expelling as many of these spheres, so to speak. So not as many are coming back in, which is why when we give them nitro and their blood pressure tanks because it was already low, they don't have enough preload coming in to fill a heart that isn't contracting properly, so they don't maintain enough pressure to maintain life unless we you know, fluid load these patients first, and uh, I won't get into that one in this video. But that is basically how Starling's Law actually works. That is how preload actually works. So when you think of Starling's Law, I want you to think of preload.